Spherical nucleic acids are structures that are made by taking uh, nanoparticles, uh, synthesizing short snippets of DNA or, or RNA that are terminated with groups that can chemically bond to the particles. And under the appropriate conditions, you can load up the uh, short snippets of DNA or RNA under the surface of the particle so that they adopt the shape of the central particle core. With a vaccine, you have two basic components. Uh, you have something called an adjuvant, which is a molecule that stimulates the immune system. Uh, and you have something called an antigen, typically a peptide signature, that helps train the immune system. And so with a spherical nucleic acid vaccine, you take advantage of the fact that this type of architecture gets into cells, uh, gets into uh, dendritic cells, and in fact, uh, antigen-presenting cells, which are really important in the immune system. And certain sequences of DNA or RNA can be used to selectively stimulate those cells. In addition, they can carry in with them, if you put, for example, in their cores or load up on them, a particular type of antigen, structures that train the immune system, train T cells, to give you a very selective killer response. So if you're trying to develop a cancer vaccine, you basically take a, a spherical nucleic acid made of the appropriate adjuvant molecules, and you load into them or onto them uh, the appropriate peptide signatures that are unique to those cancer cells. You locally stimulate, for example, the subcutaneous injection. Uh, you train those cells to then train T cells to selectively go out throughout the lymphatic system, find cells that have those signatures, cancer cells, and selectively lyse them. So when they're systemically administered, uh, they go to all regions of the body. They go into the lung. They go into uh, the epithelial cells. They go uh, into uh, the, the, the liver. Uh, they cross the blood-brain barrier. They get into the heart. Uh, and that's interesting. One is because it shows a difference, that structure makes a difference. But it also means that you then can use that understanding to begin to create new approaches to therapies. Uh, and in fact, very recently, we've learned how to take spherical nucleic acids deeply into the brain because if they're intrathecally injected, so into the spinal cord, uh, they will access all parts of the brain. And that's exciting if you're trying to develop drugs uh, that treat neurodegenerative disorders. And we've asked the basic question, does structure make a difference? Uh, I kind of think of the uh, regular way, the conventional way that people develop vaccines as the blender approach. Just take the active components put them in and hope they work. If they work, run with it. If they don't, move on to the next. We're asking the question, is there a difference? Let's say you have something that works. Can you make it better by controlling the structure and the way those components are presented in the context of a spherical nucleic acid? And the answer is there is a huge difference. We've been able to look at three different structures now, very systematically across many different animal models for cancer. And we've shown consistently that one of the three structures outperforms the others substantially. On one end of the spectrum, you have completely ineffective vaccines. And in the other case, you have totally curative, which is remarkable. And that has many implications. One is it says we're probably designing vaccines incorrectly and we can do a lot better. But two is it makes you wonder where people have looked at possible components, adjuvants and antigens. Did they have the wrong components or did they have the wrong structure? Pitcon's great. Uh, they do a phenomenal job of attracting super smart people um, to whatever area they're in. Uh, they uh, have on display uh, the state of the art in terms of equipment capabilities. Uh, and they put together a scientific program that's truly spectacular and, and attracts uh, some of the best and brightest from all over the world. So it's a great way to, to learn about really everything that's important in terms of science, the instrumentation, uh, but also the science being conducted with that instrumentation. Uh, there, I don't think there's any other venue that uh, puts together a better show, puts together a better platform of the state of the art, uh, both on the instrument side and on the science side. Um, and if uh, you know, I think of one uh, show that I want to go to, it's, it's PitCon.